Joining us now to discuss if enough is being done to stem the spread of the virus is former Deputy Assistant Secretary for Policy at the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, Paul Rosenzweig. Paul, great to have you with us. A question that's been on everyone's lips, on everyone's minds, is the U.S. government doing enough to battle this outbreak at this point? Well, I think we can say that retrospectively it hadn't done enough. It appears as though we may be on the cusp of beginning the type of effort that we all would wish had happened six, eight weeks ago. Uh, we are desperately short on supplies, um, everything ranging from uh, masks and gloves to uh, ICU beds and ventilators that are much harder to, to create and uh, uh, ramp up with quickly. Uh, vaccine uh, investigation and, and hopefully development production is still uh, 12 to 18 months away. It's going to be a very long and difficult journey for the government and for the American people. A long and difficult and unknown journey ahead, but what's your advice in terms of Americans trusting the messaging, the rhetoric that we're getting? We've seen some contradictory statements and sentiments from President Trump and his team. Who should be the source of truth at this point? I find trusted sources where I can. Uh, I find Dr. Fauci to be eminently credible and we should rely on him. I think that uh, other members of the public health uh, community are uh, to be relied upon. Uh, to be honest with you, I think that Vice President Pence is doing a pretty decent job of trying to stay on message and project the right uh, idea of calm. Yeah, I just touched my face. Sorry about that. Um, and uh, But uh, it's going to, American people are going to have to look to sources they trust. It may be governors. It may be uh, their local mayor. Uh, unfortunately, it may not be the president. And New York's governor, Andrew Cuomo, is asking the federal government to step up to the plate and do more, including trying to increase the number of hospital beds and relaxing federal government restrictions on hospitals. Is this a prudent idea, and what more can the federal government do? Well, the federal government is best at mobilizing large resources that are beyond the capabilities of any particular state. So, for example, if the federal government were to invoke the Defense Production Act and uh, demand, mandate that uh, manufacturers produce more ventilators quickly, that's the type of authority that it has in an emergency that state governments do not. That's the sort of thing that it can do. It can bring the Army Corps of Engineers out to erect emergency uh, uh, facilities for, uh, for health care, whether they're tent cities or, or Quonset hot hospitals, uh, that's the type of thing that the federal government can do. It, it can free up money, uh, and, and uh, it can provide backstop loans to the markets and things like that uh, that, are, uh, that are necessary, like the, um, like the airline industry. Looking outside the U.S., the WHO has recently lauded the reactions of China and South Korea in trying to tamp down on their cases in their countries. What do you think the U.S. government can learn from what other countries have done at this point, namely those China, Italy, South Korea, where the outbreaks um, had originated in the first place? Well, particularly uh, useful for us uh, is the model of emulating other uh, successful uh, democratic or quasi-democratic countries. We can't do what China has done uh, because we just don't have a society that's built that way. But South Korea was an extremely good and effective model in uh, flattening the curve. Some of the parts of Italy where social distancing went into effect earlier, like Lodi, uh, were good models for reducing the incidence of, of infection and disease. Um, uh, the places that we should not be following, the models we should not be following, are some of the more uh, uh, laissez-faire approaches mm -hmm. of other parts of Italy, where Robert. we would want very much to uh, right. you know, rely upon right. uh, more than just social distancing. Paul, we're going to have to leave it there. Paul Rosenzweig, Sorry. thanks again for, your, again for your time today. Well, global markets continue to plunge today as airlines cut service and public-facing companies shut their